How y'all doing? <clears throat> it's been a while, huh? Well, at least it's been a while since my last episode of this series. Uh, you remember? Y'all remember the Wrestle Zone? Well, uh, I'm finally continuing. Sorry, we've had a hectic couple of years. It's been a while between episodes. Uh, I didn't intend for that to happen. Just one second. Um, Obviously, a lot's happened in that time frame since uh, my last episode. Uh, <clears throat> AEW's pretty strong right now. The legendary Undertaker retired from the WWE in November of 2020. <clears throat> That's going to be a big uh, thing on this episode. It's going to be a big topic of this episode, so I'm sure you all know that. Okay, so... Uh, more recently, I see that, uh, I actually don't have cable right now, so I'm going to do the best I can here, um, that, uh, John Moxley, uh, took the undisputed title in AEW from, uh, CM Punk. That's, uh, pretty interesting. Uh, both are excellent wrestlers, both are great at what they do, um, uh, both have excelled in any promotion that they've been in, despite... You know, obviously, being held back when they were in WWE. Moxley, in particular, when he was uh, Dean Ambrose, he didn't really... You, you kind of saw a glimpse of what he could do, but he wasn't really given the same... Uh, that, like... <clears throat> he wasn't really given the same, like, pushes, like, that, obviously, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins are given. Um, but, I'm glad to see he's doing well in AEW. I actually really like AEW. Um, obviously I'd watch it if I had cable right now. Um, same with, uh, even Impact. Uh, yes, TNA Impact is still around. Yeah, ain't that interesting? Not that I want it to fail, I don't. I'm just, <clears throat> everybody thought it was going to. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, some interesting, uh, something about, interesting about, uh, TNA, that, uh, so, some of y'all probably got this, but I think a lot of people didn't, um, okay, so TNA was formed in, uh, 2002, obviously, okay, WCW went out of business in 2001, okay, so a lot of the WCW wrestlers went to TNA, so, with that logic, TNA essentially evolved from WCW. So, if you really want to think about it, technically, yes, Raven. Uh, sorry, my cat. Uh, one of my cats. Um, WCW didn't really go away. It just morphed into TNA. <laughs> then that, essentially, is, I guess you could say, kind of split off somewhat, and is what AEW is. So, <clears throat> that's why, uh, in 2016, when they had that, or was it 2016? No, 2015, sorry. Uh, 2015, when they had that match, uh, WrestleMania, Sting versus Triple H. Everybody thought Sting was going to go over, right? <laughs> Wrong. So they, they essentially let the old WCW versus WWE or WWF then grudge continue. Seriously, y'all need to get over that. Okay? That was in 2001. You know, Monday Night Wars, you know, the late 90s through 2001. Okay. So, I mean, uh, WWE needs to, you know, get over that. They obviously won that battle, so, I mean, you know, why why continue to just, you know, gloat over it, so to speak? I mean, why did Triple H need that rub? Don't get me wrong, I love Triple H, okay, but he didn't need that victory. So, but, man, yeah, it is what it is. That's why I'm happy that uh, 
Because I've always loved Sting, too. Um, that's why I'm happy Sting could uh, find new life in uh, AEW. Because he honestly didn't really get... When he finally got to WWE, he didn't really get a chance to do much. I mean... Everybody wanted, obviously, Sting versus The Undertaker. And that's what we thought we were going to get. But we didn't. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, the, the match versus Triple H was all right. <clears throat> uh, the ending was kind of weird. I mean, you had uh, the New World Order coming to assist Sting, which they were never really... They never really saw eye to eye in WCW, so that didn't really make much sense. And, of course, with Triple H, you had DX. So, yeah. It is what it is, you know. I mean, obviously, the match of that night for uh, Mania 31, I would still say, was Undertaker versus Bray Wyatt. So, uh, yeah, Bray Wyatt got hurt before that match, but uh, he still put on a really great show. I mean, uh, there were some uh, people that say, oh, uh, Taker should have put him over and all this and that. And it's like, well... Bray Wyatt wasn't booked right for that year before, okay? When he lost that first feud to John Cena, that killed his momentum. So who was going to take him seriously? And then he kept losing feud after feud after that. So when he finally was going to face The Undertaker at WrestleMania 31, I mean, you would, you would have had to believe that he was a legit threat to beat him. And the only way that would have worked was Taker should have beat Lesnar at WrestleMania 30. Then Bray Wyatt should have won nearly every feud he was in up until that point. And Bray Wyatt should have been the one to take the streak. I mean, not that I think the streak should have ever ended, because obviously I don't. I mean, yeah, that, yeah. That, the streak should have never ended. Taker should have never lost at WrestleMania. But we'll get to that. Um, but I'm saying, if you're pushing up up and coming s superstar, especially the Eater of Worlds gimmick that he, Bray Wyatt originally had, then it just, you know, it would have made more sense than to just give the, you know, give the victory to Brock when Brock didn't need it, and I've heard, uh, Vince McMahon say this, oh, Nate Brock's. Brock Lesnar was already a star. So how do you get that logic from that? Brock Lesnar was already a star, okay? He didn't need that rub. And fa fast forward three years to 2017 when Taker faced, uh, yes, I'm wearing one of my Undertaker shirts. Um, Taker faced Re Reigns at WrestleMania, uh, 30. Three? Is it 32? Yeah, 33. Yeah. 33. So, um, did Brains need that, need that rub? No, not really. Uh, <clears throat> see, they were trying to get Reigns over. And, really, why would, why would you think that a victory over the Undertaker at WrestleMania would do that? Okay, that made no sense. And the whole storyline made no sense. It's like, it's like, okay, he eliminates the Undertaker in the Royal Rumble. Oh come on, that get that gives everybody that gets eliminated from the Royal Rumble a, a match at WrestleMania by that logic. So like, talk about a weak storyline. Jeez. But. <clears throat> Yeah, Taker wasn't his best in that match, obviously, as he wasn't his best in the match against Lesnar. But, uh, he still took, uh, Reigns five spears in, I'd say about ten Superman punches before Taker actually stayed down. So, you know, I'd say about 15 finishing moves before Taker actually stayed down in that match. So, that's actually pretty impressive. But... Would I watch that match again? Hell no. No, once was enough.
on that one. But, uh, anyways, um, so more recently, uh, uh, WWE's been flirting with the idea of, uh, going back to TV 14. Uh, but now the latest news is they're not going to do that. And the reason for that is Stephanie. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, that's my neighbor outside. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you're going to get background uh, stuff. I'm sorry about that. I don't know how to do noise reduction on this. Um, anyways. Yeah, AEW's been doing good, from what I've seen. Um, so anyways, oh, back to WWE, so... Yeah, Stephanie doesn't want to do the TV-14 again, which quite frankly doesn't make any sense, because people were... The, the, the response was so positive, they're like, oh, they're going to go back to the, you know, the, you know, the edgier stuff, and it's like, yeah, yeah that'd be awesome, but now, now they're going to stick with PG, and they're just going to supposedly write better storylines. Okay, well, well, to be fair, I've heard that before. I want to say maybe it'll work, but, you know, AEW's TV-14 does pretty good for them, so. Yeah, we'll, have, we'll see after, how the goals act, I guess. Um, there's some uh, rumors about uh, some wrestlers who may be coming back to WWE soon. Uh, Bray Wyatt uh, is one of them. Uh, could be going to AEW as well, too. Um, there's a rumor floating around, or at least there was about a month ago, about Alberto Del Rio. Uh, not a good idea, folks. Uh, <laughs> guy carries way too much baggage. Um, I feel bad for any company that signs him. Um... Another guy that, <laughs> obviously, I don't think any company would want to sign this guy, and that's Ryback. It's like, dude, you need to shut the hell up. You suck, okay? Seriously. You have an opinion about everything. You have an opinion about The Undertaker. You have an opinion about AEW. You have an opinion about WWE. It's like, dude, nobody cares what you have to say. You are not that good of a wrestler. Essentially, mostly what you did was squash matches. Basically, just like people said you were in the beginning, you were just a cheap version of Goldberg. So, I should say a less cheap version of... Yeah, Goldberg is more talented, for one. And, uh, honestly, that... The priority of him, Gilbert, is more fun, fun to watch than you. See, even my, my cat Coco agrees. Um, but, yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Um, yeah, this is one of my Undertaker figures, one of my many Undertaker figures, as you can see. Oh, yeah, uh, a couple of shout-outs. Um... Hi, Dixie, darling. Yes, I told you I'd do this video for you. Love you, darling. Hugs. Um, let's see. Aaron, what's up, dude? Yeah, I know you're laid up right now. Can't really do anything. Yeah, my buddy Aaron hurt his... Uh, basically broke his knee because... Uh, the place he was working at wasn't actually supposed to open, so... Essentially, you know, yeah. so he fell and got hurt, fell, stepped into a drain and got hurt. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, my buddy Tyler, if you're watching this, uh, you used to do his, uh, what was your show called? He, he did a YouTube uh, wrestling show, I think it was called Wrestle Chat. Well, Tyler, you, I think the last episode you did of that was about the last time I did this one, so... Get back to work! 
<laughs> no, seriously, seriously, folks. Uh, yeah, I know it's it's been a while since I've done an episode. Uh, these episodes are going to vary in length. As I stated before, I mean, some are going to be shorter, some are going to be longer. Just depends on what I have to say that day. Um, uh, Roman Reigns is, I guess, still at the top in WWE, still the champion as far as I know. Like I said, I don't have Gable right now, so um, I kind of, <clears throat> I kind of freaking knew that wasn't going to uh, change anytime soon. Uh, Brock Lesnar has. Well, he looks different now, and as opposed to what you see him normally look in past years. But as I can tell, he's fun to watch. Um, yeah, there's uh, other rumors going around about the pro wrestling as a whole and what uh, may be happening with it in the future. Um, I do have an idea. But you'd have to get the companies on the same page for this. And that's cross-promotion pay-per-views. Now what I mean by that is, say, WWE versus AEW. Okay? You wrestle eight matches. Okay? Yeah, you pit the AEW stars against the WWE superstars. No, they're all superstars, but you, you know what I mean. Okay, so, and you do, you say, eight matches, okay, so, and then you see who's the leader at the end of the night, or if it's a tie. Now, me personally, if I'm booking these, the first couple of these would be ties. Yeah, I know the problem with WWE is they'd want to be, you know, you know, on the winning end of all of them, but, uh. In order for this to work, in order for people to actually want to watch it and pay attention to it, um, you'd have to split it evenly. So if it's WWE versus Impact Wrestling, same thing. But you'd have you'd have these these pay per views that are cross promotional, and what that would do as a whole is. Uh, What that would do as a whole, it was, it would keep people interested in pro wrestling. They'd be like, okay, I don't know what's going to happen here. As opposed to watching, say, a WWE pay-per-view, like, Night of Champions. And like, oh, okay, I mean, this is most likely going to happen. This is most likely going to happen. And so it's like, there really ain't much, much of a sense in watching it. And that's what some people's logic is. So, but if you give them a cross-promotional pay-per-view where you have, say, Kenny Omega versus AJ Styles. I mean, I, I think they've read, read, wrestled each other before in, like, New Japan or Impact or whatever. It can um, but, you know, something like that or uh, the women's champion, like, say, Thunder Rosa versus... Uh, Becky Lynch, okay? Something like that. Who wouldn't want to see that, right? But in order for that to happen, you have to have the promotions put aside their differences and sit down and say, okay, we're all pro wrestling here. We're all trying to do the same thing here. Let's get together and make some real money. And that's what they can do here. I know it's never going to happen. Yes, I know that. Yeah, whatever. But yeah, I'm just. That's just my opinion. I mean, I think it'd be a good idea. Uh, I mean, that's, that's that's what I would try to do. I know Vince McMahon. If he was still in, in charge, he would never go for that. I know that. Triple H, though, I will say Triple H would at least listen. He may not do it. But Triple H would listen to what I had to say about it. But, you know, I'm just a fan, so, you know, obviously my opinion doesn't really matter. But I think that'd be cool. <clears throat> um, 
But, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, pro wrestling still fun uh, to watch. Um, even you, even the independent circuits. Like, I have a friend on my friends list. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. <laughs> uh, Kalumi Stevens. But her her, her uh, model name, she's a model too, is Justice Lee. Okay, she works in wrestling. Yeah, so that's cool. Um, if y'all remember many, many, many years ago, there was a promotion called Kids Pro Wrestling. And I used to talk to this guy, uh, I hardly hear from him anymore, his name was Sean Crossan. But if you were familiar with Kids Pro Wrestling, he went by Sean the Crusher Crossan. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, we actually, um, yeah, my friend, my friend Steve, that used to work at the store, the uh, older Steve, because there are two Steves that work at the store, the other one still works there, but the older one passed away. He introduced me to this, uh, wrestler that was around here, lived, li lives around here, he's one of the executioners. Yeah, the, the tag team, the executioners. So that was pretty cool. And of course, uh, <clears throat> 11 years ago, I met Mick Foley at the uh, mall. So that was pretty cool. So, yeah, yeah. It's pretty good, you know. It's, uh, it's fun stuff. It's fun to watch. Uh, I know some people just, they, they don't like wrestling or whatever, and they just say, well, no, oh, it's fake and all this other Yeah. Most, t most TV shows and movies are fake. First of all, <laughs> if you want to play that card, and to be fair, I've I've heard stories about other sports. Uh, you know, I've questioned some uh, NFL games, and definitely questions questioned some NASCAR races, especially ones that Kyle Busch wins. Yeah, loser. Um, <clears throat> but uh. There was a, um, I'm trying to think of what, there was another wrestling promotion that was around a few years ago, I just can't remember what it's called, I think it was called, maybe it's still around, it's called Global Pro Wrestling, GPW, it might still be around, uh, I don't think they ever made it very far, um, I know Ring of Honor got either bought out or sold, one of the two. You know, Ring of Honor was, was fun, though. I mean, that's where CM Punk came from. So, and guys like that, Brian Danielson, that's where they came from. Yeah. Fun stuff. Yeah, my ra my cat's complaining, cat Raven's complaining in the background. Yes, Raven. Coco sleeping behind me. Um... Anyways, uh, speaking of wrestling, uh, one thing I want to bring up is the home media, like the DVDs, okay? Okay, I don't know who chooses some of these matches for these sets, but seriously, some, some of these, you need to do a better job. I mean, some of these sets, they have a couple of good matches, and the rest of them suck. Um... Like, I was reading through the matches for the, uh, the ladder match, the three-disc set, the first one there. I mean, there's a few good ones, but so many that they left out, you know? That, you know, obviously everybody knows, so it's like... But, eh, it is what it is. Um, I, can't, I can say one of the best overall... Uh, compilation sets that I picked up recently, or not recently, you know, like three or four years ago, but, uh, the, the one that, it's called the Best of the 2000s, it's a four disc set, so it has, it has pretty much every match you can think of on there, so, the, uh, Undertaker versus HBK at WrestleMania 25, the, uh, Three Stages of Hell match, Stone Cold versus Triple H is on there. 
um, one of the tag team ladder matches is on there. I think it's, it's either the second one for Mania 17 or it's the first one from SummerSlam 2000. It's one of the two. Honestly, they should have both been on there. Um, the uh, excellent match between HBK and uh, John Cena from uh, Raw. Yeah, not the WrestleMania match, folks. No. The Raw one. The one that everybody talks about. That is actually on the set. Yep. Um, there, there were some matches that, you know, could have been added. Uh, for one thing, uh, say like... The Undertaker versus Edge, Hell in a Cell, or something like that. I mean, the only other Undertaker match on the set was the versus Kurt Angle from the uh, No Way Out pay per view in 2006. Okay, good match, but don't know if it was really good enough for the set. You know, I mean, it's not one that a lot of people talk about compared to others. You know, uh. But, you know, overall, it's a good set, and it should be noted that since this is after the uh, WWE had reached a deal with the World Wildlife Fund, World, World Wildlife Fund, I should say, the Scratch logo is intact on the Attitude Era matches. So it's not blurred out. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, that's another thing you could look forward to that set. You don't have to see the annoying logo blurred out in the, in the corner or whatever in the corners of the ring so that's it's pretty sweet um there should be uh some a and e biographies coming out this year for eight or uh wrestlers uh i think it was last month they did one on taker so obviously i'll be getting that it comes out. Uh, it's kind of iffy though because uh, it's getting so some of these companies don't want to release DVDs and Blu-rays anymore, even though there's a large market for them. I mean, physical media is you know it's never going to go away. I mean, streaming, streaming it is what it is. Okay, when you when you stream something, it's not always there. A lot of times it gets removed. So I mean, at least you have physical media, you have it. You know you have it. That does, that does, it's not the case with streaming. That's why I don't pay for streaming services, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I use things like maybe Tubi and stuff like that. Or stuff you can watch, you know, watch, you know, movies and shows for free. But as far as paying, paying for like eight or nine streaming services, I'm not going to do it. It's nothing personal. It's just... I don't see that it's worth it. So. But anyways, um, let's see. I'm trying to think about what else I wanted to say. Um, well, I guess that pretty much wraps it up for this episode. Uh, like I said, I'm sorry I haven't been doing these. I got to get back to my other sh other shows too that I've been doing on YouTube. Uh, I suspect I may get a letter from History Channel. Now, what I mean by that is, I had a, I have a show on here called History's Greatest Mysteries. Okay. Now, obviously, my show predates History Channel's show, but I don't think they're smart enough to know that. So, once I pick that up again, I'm probably going to get some sort of cease and desist letter from them. But, eh, whatever. It's not like they really show history anyway. It's mostly reality shows on that channel now. Um, <clears throat> anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this. Um, I will have more to talk about on WrestleZone in the future. I am uh, planning for future episodes. I'm going to catch. I'm going to try to catch up more so I be more accurate. Oh, yeah, the other the other thing I wanted to uh, address before I wrap this up was uh, I said The Undertaker uh, hold on a second.
control's getting a little dry. <clears throat> I said the Undertaker retired November 2020, but I didn't real elaborate. Yeah, he the Undertaker retired, and uh, after his last match was against AJ Styles at WrestleMania. What was it 36? I think yeah, I think 2020 was 36. I don't know, I forget. But, um, this is the, this is the back, back of the back right there. Oh. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was a boneyard match, which essentially is a buried alive match. But it was more, it came off more like a mini horror movie, and it was excellent. I mean, I see why at one match of the year because uh, it was great. I mean, honestly, there should be a lot more matches like that. I mean, uh, supposedly the match before COVID hit was supposed to be just, you know, a singles match. And it's like, okay, but, you know, singles, these singles matches are getting kind of boring, you know? With no stipulations or nothing. Or even if there is a stipulation, I mean, so. This, the Boneyard match was fresh. So, I mean, that's why it stood out. I mean, I can't think of a better way for Taker to go out and, Come on, Raven. Um, then a match like that. And some people will say, oh, he, he won. Yeah, obviously he did win. But, you see, the difference is, I don't think a wrestler like him should go out on their back. I don't think they should lose their last match. And what I mean by that is, okay, he's the Undertaker. He's always risen up, right? But the reality is, settle down, Raven. The reality is, many, many, many years from now, when Taker's, you know, gone for real, and he no longer can rise up anymore, it's going to be hard to bury him. That's what I'm saying is, if he had lost his last match, be like burying him twice, and that's just that's just too much to go through. I I wouldn't want to do that. It was hard enough seeing him lose those other two matches in WrestleMania, but to lose and just be completely done after that, like you're a broken person. No. No. Nobody. Nobody should go out like that. I even had, <clears throat> had mixed feelings about Flair going out like that, even though he obviously wrestled in other promotions after that. But, yeah. The Taker is... I looked up his status, his stats, uh, his full stats in his career. He's got over 1,700 wins, only 400-something losses, and that's every match, you know, that's untelevised matches and whatnot. I mean, that's the problem with WWE is a few, a few years ago they were saying he had 666. And yeah, it's because you're only counting the televised ones. You're not counting everything else. I count every match that he ever stepped foot in the ring for. And he's got, Taker's got over 1,700 wins. Coco, are you sleeping over there? Um, <clears throat> so, that's quite an accomplishment. In my opinion, I know I'm not the only one that feels this way, but not my opinion, he is the greatest of all time. I've seen him come and I've seen him go, and there's plenty of other legends that I, you know, like Andre the Giant, and Stone Cold Steve Austin, but Taker's left them all behind. I mean, the way that he will put wrestlers over, I mean, some people say, well, well, John Cena, it's like, no, John Cena does not really put a lot of wrestlers over like that. See, John Cena would was the reason that Nexus didn't succeed. He was also the reason that Bray Wyatt's momentum stopped early in his career. So, I mean... So, t theoretically, Taker could have been a 20-time champion because he helped. He stayed with the company. He didn't jump ship to another company. 
He helped put over wrestlers. And this is all stuff that he didn't have to do, folks. But he did it because that's the kind of person that he is. So, like doing the Attitude Era, when he was helping put out over guys like The Rock and Stone Cold and The Young Big Show, and, you know, people like that. That is what helped the Attitude Era be successful. Now you can, oh, you can say, oh, it would have been successful if he had not been there. It's like, maybe, but maybe not. But if you didn't have those big matches like that, and it, honestly, if you take away The Undertaker, you're also taking away Kane. So if you take away Undertaker and Kane from the Attitude Era, you look, what's left? You think of all those matches they were involved in from when Kane debuted in 97 through the Attitude Era. Those three and a half plus years. What would you have left without those two in the Attitude Era? Would have it even continue like that? Or what, would you just have like The Rock and Stone Cold wrestle each other like every other night? Don't know, right? Because you got to remember, HBK got hurt and was out for four years from 98 through 2002. Then, eventually The Rock started doing movies. So, I mean, The Undertaker really did a lot more than he's given credit for. And I don't, I don't say that because he's my favorite. Obviously he is, but I say it because it's true. What if he had jumped ship to, say, WCW, then what, huh? Would, would WWF, as it was called then, still be around? Maybe. Maybe not. We'll never know. But I'd say it's a good thing he didn't. Based on everything he's done, everything he's accomplished, and how he's helped the company, and continues to help the company. <clears throat> I read this article a while back. It says that The Undertaker was one of the few people that WWE needs more than he needs it. And that's true. The way he works with the young talent. Um, hell, the guys from the New Day, because they would have wrestlers court, the Undertaker was often the judge, so a couple years ago, or maybe it was last year, I don't know, but they uh, got the New Day got Undertaker a little gavel, a little judge gavel that says Judge Undertaker on it. How cool is that? That's respect. I mean, the, the whole locker room, he's he's the locker room leader. He's king of the locker room. It, was a, it got to the point, you know, even... Back in the 90s, where Vince would have them bring their problems to Undertaker before they brought them to him. And that says a lot right there. But, yeah, the Undertaker is great inside and outside of the ring. I can only hope to meet him one day. Shake his hand. But, I don't know. I don't know if it'll ever happen. But. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this. I'll have another episode for you in the near future. I'm sorry this took so long. Uh, I hope you have a nice night, and I'll have more videos for you soon.